This week's Case of the Week is for a four-unit uh, Zirconia Bridge, a Bruxa Bridge from 7 through 10, missing teeth number 8 and 9. Um, we're, as a lab, we're not a big fan of double arch impression trays um, being used for bridges. We just see higher remake rates with that. But if you are going to use one, this T-Lock tray from Premier is a good one to use. I do, As far as anterior double arch trays go, I like this one. It's pretty stiff when you try to squeeze it laterally. And it's called a T-Lock tray. You can see some of those little plastic T's there. And it didn't completely engage in some of these areas. But when you fill this with material all the way against the periphery, it really will lock in against these. So this tray is just slightly underfilled here. It's still, it's engaging enough of these where the material is not coming out and it's already been poured. Um, so that's good. You can see we've got two areas of uh, maybe recent extractions. I'm guessing recent extractions just by the depth of the material going into that. So... Um, it would be nice to have uh, more teeth on here, but as you look at this, I start to think, well, maybe there aren't any more teeth. When this is poured up and we look at the models, um, maybe there isn't any more posterior teeth, and that's why. So in that case, <laughs> that would be okay. If there's no more posterior teeth, what essentially we got uh, on this impression would be the same as if we took full upper and lower with a bite registration. Uh, all we have for a bite are these two uh, are the cuspids touching and so that's a little bit you know difficult that's kind of a point contact and we really don't have anything else the doctor has asked us on the rx uh, to open the bite half a millimeter um, usually we we want to specify if it's in the anterior or the posterior but all we have are anterior teeth connecting so i guess we're going to open this half a millimeter which is going to place the occlusion uh, off the cuspids and onto the bridge i suppose i don't think there's any way to open this without removing that contact on the cuspids and putting it all uh, squarely onto the um, uh, the Bruxer Bridge from 10, 7 to 10 itself. So as we look at the preparations, actually, I'll, let me move this away for a minute. Let's look at it on the solid model here and see what we have. So good retraction. You know, I can definitely see all the way around that prep. Not quite as clean over on this side uh, as that side, but pretty close and not bad. The preps appear to be smooth. You know, you don't see any coarse uh, burr marks there. But as you look at it, if we're going to close one eye or we're going to do whatever trick we were taught in dental school, if we're going to view down this one and go, okay, let's get the path of insertion here. I can see the margin all the way around. If you look now over at this tooth, we can't see it. And if we turn this one to just be, let's just clear that distal. Now we're missing over here as well. Now, this is something that obviously is way easier to see out of the mouth than it is in the mouth. And that's the real challenge is how do we do this in the mouth and avoid having undercuts? Because now we've got to call the doctor and say, well, you know, if it's usually if it's uh, incisal reduction that we're short on, uh, we can do a reduction coping. But axial reduction copings are difficult to kind of pull off when because of undercuts or path of insertion problems uh, like this. And so... It could be a reprep, but you know the doctor already tried here. It's going to be difficult to uh, to get it right again. And so, uh, as you know by now, hopefully, when we get a polyvinyl impression uh, in from a dentist, we pour it up, and once we get the model, once we get the solid model and the mounted models, uh, we scan them, put them in a box scanner, and scan them, and then get right into the digital environment because this is where. Uh, we can really see what's going on in terms of reduction. You might have seen on the on the articulated models that we were short, so it's good the doctor wanted us to open it up half a millimeter. Uh, but we can see what we're talking about in terms of path of insertion problems. We've got over a half millimeter of undercut here and four-tenths uh, over on this tooth uh, when we insert it along the most uh, optimistic uh, path of insertion. And so... We have an issue here, you know, both of these preps need to be touched or maybe one of them heavily or both of them lightly to be able to get it. But how's the dentist going to know? Well, it's really interesting uh, and we've seen it, I've seen it myself, um, when I've done anterior bridges like this and I scan it with a digital scanner rather than taking a polyvinyl impression, so I'm going to use a digital scanner and scan this, um, when it pops up on the screen, it doesn't show me whether or not there's undercuts. We're going to have to see software advances on the chair side scanners to be able to see this but you can send it to your laboratory the digital impression and your lab will have it two minutes later and we could have identified this for the doctor from a digital impression because when you send a digital impression you don't have to pour the models 
section them, mount them, and then scan them. We have this instantly when the dentist takes a digital impression. And what we're able to do and what Cindy does with me on my cases is because I still get undercuts, there's there's no like great way to prevent this from happening in the mouth. It's just almost too difficult uh, to do. But when I send this to Cindy and two minutes later, she's identified the undercuts for me. And I'm just showing you one view, but there's other views, other screen grabs she can do showing you where you need to reduce more. It makes it very simple. And the biggest deal about these screen grabs, and you can do this with any dentist and any lab that's you know CAD CAM capable, is that the patient's still in the chair, the patient's still anesthetized, your laboratory can send you, here's where it's undercut, here's what the path of insertion looks like, and then rotate it and show you, here's where you need to reduce here and right on this line angle. You know, if you had a stone model yourself, you could probably see it. In fact, it wouldn't be maybe a bad idea to use an alginate substitute, take an impression of the preps, mix up a little slurry mix of stone, pour it up so you can see the preps out of the mouth, which is infinitely easier than seeing it in the mouth and it allows you to take a perio probe and view things that you really can't view in the patient's mouth it's very difficult but it's easy to do out of the mouth so if your lab is cad cam enabled lean on them a little bit because when you take a digital impression and send it into them they they have this two minutes later they can send you a screen grab with the measurements of the undercuts and the exact location so you can see where it is and the patient's still there and the patient's still numb you can make the adjustments take another digital impression send it back to your lab have them look at it again that is far preferable to me than to have the patient come back again take the temps off after you re-anesthetize touch it up take another polyvinyl and, and hope it's correct and wait for the lab to measure it and do it again that's a really dicey way to do it the diciest way is for us to go make the changes here make the bridge, send it back, and then the doctor try to make those changes in the mouth so the bridge will go down. So this is another great example of what you can do with a digital impression that you can't do with a polyvinyl impression. You can get nearly real-time feedback from your laboratory technician on whether or not these preps are going to draw, and if not, what you need to do to correct it. And then once you've attempted to correct it, you can take another digital scan, send it to your lab, and have them verify whether or not it's correct. It's almost like having the lab technician look over your shoulder as you're prepping these teeth to ensure you get it right on that prep appointment so that you know with 100% certainty that when you take that impression and you put those temps on and the patient comes back next time, these preps will in fact draw and you'll be able to seat the bridge. You'll have a happy technician, a happy dentist, and a happy patient.